Today, I want to talk about Vivian Mayer. If you don't know, Vivian Mayer was an American street photographer who gained posthumous recognition for her exceptional work. Born in New York City in 1926, she grew up to work as a nanny for several families in Chicago and New York throughout her life, while pursuing her passion for photography in her free time. She captured everyday life on the streets, focusing on people from all walks of life, including the marginalized and forgotten members of society. Mayer's work was largely unknown during her lifetime, and she remained an enigmatic figure. She was a bit of a pack rat, who kept all of her negatives stored in a storage unit in Chicago, and for many years, Mayer's work went largely and intentionally unnoticed, until she died in obscurity in 2009. However, back in 2007, a man named John Maloof, as well as some others, came upon boxes of Mayer's negatives at an auction, and he won one of the boxes, the biggest one of the bunch, for just $380. John Maloof was immediately struck by their quality and depth. John Maloof's life became quickly entangled with the life of Vivian Mayer. Eventually, over time, he would go on to uncover over 100,000 negatives, as well as undeveloped film and other photographic materials that were left in her storage unit. And when he developed the film, he was amazed by the quality of the images, and he began to research Mayer's life. He soon discovered that Vivian had been a prolific and capable photographer, and he set about sharing her work with as many people as possible. He went on to curate a number of exhibitions of Mayer's work, and he helped bring her talent to the attention of the wider world. Her unique photographic style, combined with the story of her secretive life, has captivated audiences around the world and her work is now considered some of the most important and powerful street photography of the 20th century. Her photographs have been exhibited in galleries and museums worldwide, and several books have been published showcasing her work. Her life and work has been the subject of several documentaries and books, which all contributes to the increasing interest and recognition for her remarkable talent. I actually have one of those books with me here, and it's was one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. It's called Vivian Mayer, A Photographer's Life and Afterlife by Pamela Banos, and I highly recommend it. It's an, a phenomenal read. We'll hear a little bit from this book a little bit later, but um, definitely check this out. Vivian Mayer's story as a photographer is a fascinating one, marked by both incredible talent and mystery. She began taking photos in the 1940s when she was a teenager in New York City. Despite never receiving formal training in photography, she continued to take photos throughout her entire life, even as she worked as a nanny for families in New York and Chicago. And she was always known as a private person, and she rarely showed her photographs to anyone. She would often take her camera with her when she was just walking on the street, capturing candid shots of people just living their daily lives. Her photographs were marked by their unique perspective capturing the humanity of her subjects in a way that was both honest and empathetic. Vivian's work is particularly notable for her ability to capture candid and intimate moments of everyday life, often with a keen eye for composition and contrast. Her work has been compared to other influential street photographers such as Henri Cartier-Bresson and Robert Frank. However, as with any artist or photographer, opinions of the quality and impact of Vivian's work may vary among different individuals or critics, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Despite all this talent brewing inside of Vivian, her work remained unknown throughout her lifetime. She continued to take photographs, storing her negatives and undeveloped film in boxes that she would keep in storage lockers throughout the city of Chicago. Her unique perspective on life in the mid-20th century has captivated audiences around the world. And her photographs continue to be recognized as some of the most powerful street photography of the era. But while Vivian Mayer's photography has been widely praised for its unique style and remarkable insight into the life of mid-20th century America, there have also been some criticisms leveled at her work. And I'd like to mention them. Like some modern-day critics have argued that Mayer's photography 
was exploitative or invasive, particularly when it comes to children that she cared for as a nanny. They argued that by taking pictures of these children without their consent, that Mayer was violating their privacy and potentially putting them at risk. Because she never exhibited or published any of her work during her lifetime, some critics have argued that her images lack context or intent. They argue that without a clear understanding of what she was trying to convey through her images, it's difficult to fully appreciate their value or significance. Some critics have also questioned whether Mayer's work should be considered purely documentary or whether it has artistic value. And this is something that I would probably like to make a video on in the future, uh, the, the, I guess, differentiation between those two things. Those critics argue that while her images are certainly compelling and insightful, they lack the formal qualities of more traditional art photography. And in addition to all this, while the discovery of her extensive body of work has been celebrated as a major artistic and cultural find, there has been some criticism of the way her photographs have been exhibited and marketed. For instance, some have argued that the curators and collectors who are profiting off of Vivian Mayer's work are exploiting an unknown and vulnerable artist who had no say in how her images are used or marketed. Because her images were discovered after her death, there have been some ethical concerns raised about who owns the rights to her work and how it's being used. Some have also argued that the sheer volume of Mayer's work, combined with the intensity of media coverage and public interest, has led to her being overexposed in a way that detracts from the quality and value of her images. But despite all of these criticisms, it's worth reiterating that Vivian Mayer's photography has been widely celebrated for its unique and raw insight into the life of 20th century America. I'd like to read a quote from an article that was released like 10 years ago um, that was sort of trying to ask the question, is Vivian Mayer overrated? And I think it, it could lead to some interesting discussions. So the quote says, Vivian Mayer's photography is of a standard that I imagine I or most readers could have produced giving the same opportunity, and let's not forget that her opportunities were considerable. Essentially what this is saying is, yeah, it's really not that difficult. Anyone could have done what she did. Could anyone have done it? I'd argue no, but the point is that she did do it, so the question is irrelevant. There's an old joke that goes something like, how many photographers does it take to screw in a light bulb? And the answer is 100. One to screw in the light bulb and 99 to say, I could have done that. Photographers, I found, for some reason, are very quick to critique images rather than realize that it's not just about a properly exposed and composed image. Like, that's all fine and great from a technical photography standpoint, but it's rather pointless in the grand scheme of things, especially when the person is dead. Personally, I really enjoy Vivian Mayer's photography, but perhaps what I enjoy more is the enigmatic story of her persona. The mystery surrounding her, it's inspiring, and it's kind of romantic in a way. A little bit about me, first and foremost, I appreciate storytelling. I'm a writer and a storyteller, and the story of how Vivian Mayer's work came to be in the spotlight is a gift from some almighty storytelling god. I mean, imagine the alternatives, right? Some alternate timeline where someone other than John Maloof found the boxes of negatives. Someone with no regard or passing passion for art or history or preservation of said art or history. Imagine, imagine they tossed them in the trash. Obviously, it's impossible to know for sure, but I imagine a world where significantly fewer people are inspired to pick up a camera for the first time. Would Vivian Mayer like the art world fawning over her work? Maybe, maybe not. But I suppose by not destroying the negatives, she made sure that her work was left behind after she was gone, at least allowing the possibility that someday they would be discovered. But it's clear that her actions kept it from happening while she was alive. I'll say it again, her images continue to captivate audiences around the world, myself included. And her legacy serves as a reminder of the incredible talent that could often go unnoticed in a community or a society. In a digital era where all of our work is shared and displayed in the hope that we get some appreciation or recognition 
from others. It's refreshing to see such a great body of work from someone who seems to have loved and appreciated photography just for what it is and nothing else. I want to wrap this up with a quote from this book by Pamela Banos. Again, you should definitely give it a read um, for reasons that will become clear in a minute. On page one of the introduction, Pamela Banos writes, But rarely is a story as simple as the filtered-down version that results from multiple retellings. Each link in the chain of the Vivian Mayer story branches to reveal a much more complex and nuanced saga. I think that that's an important thing to end on, because I just told you a very brief account of the Vivian Mayer story. I said some kind words about her photography. I also mentioned some criticisms that others have lobbied at her work. But the important thing is that it doesn't just end there, right? There's so much more to this story and to this conversation and to Vivian Mayer as a person. And I implore everyone out there to go take a look at her work, form your own opinion, talk about it with someone who also loves photography. And uh, really, we should be doing that with any photographer that we respect, and even those that we don't. I think getting to know the person behind the photographs is sometimes more valuable, can make us more appreciative of the work. So I'm going to leave it at that. And if you've already subscribed to this channel, I thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. I'm going to be putting out videos like this um, about photographers who influence me. Let me know who influences you, who you think that I should make a video about. Uh, I'd love to do some research and deep dive into some people um, and talk about them because I think it's important to keep their, their legacy going. Um, that about does it. I'm going to leave you guys with some photos uh, by Vivian Mayer that I think you would enjoy. There's also a bunch of links in the description uh, where you can find other information about Vivian Mayer. There's a documentary called Finding Vivian Mayer that uh, was directed by John Maloof himself. And it's definitely a great film for anyone to watch who's interested in this story. Um, and that about wraps it up. Here are some photos by Vivian Mayer, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.